Uh, so hi, welcome to the Good Nights Podcast. We're here with uh, Fawns today. We're going to ask them some questions. I'm going to start. What inspired you to start the project? Well, um, I pre- well, I've always I've had a I've had this solo project that I kind of just work on myself, uh, you know, for some time, and I uh, w- well I sort of just decided one day to rebrand because I used to have a different name, and I decided to rebrand to this name Fawns that I had kind of swimming around in my head for a while because I felt like it would help me get back into it because I kind of fallen out of what I was doing. And it felt like if I sort of rebranded what I was doing and I put on, like, a more specific kind of feeling for what I wanted to go for, that I would help myself be more creative, and it worked. Mm -hmm. Um, But I really sort of started it since, uh, you know, everything with COVID's been going on. So, like, you know, it's really a at-home-based project. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Cool. So uh, what is your writing process like? Um, my writing process, it really depends because it could, uh, a song that I make could come from anywhere from like just going and making like, a you know, like a, an electronic drum loop or something, or like making mm-hmm. some kind of weird bass line or guitar part or something and just starting with that and then just going, um, kind of just like building off of that mm-hmm. but i also sometimes kind of go in with more of an idea for like a full song ahead of time and then actually expand on it as i'm working on it sometimes i just hear a little melody in my head and i'm like oh i want to work on that sometimes i have a mm-hmm. beat that i want to work on um but yeah generally i kind of just work on projects as I'm making them and then sort of see where they go from there. Uh, But it's uh, interestingly for this project, most of my lyrics have been completely improvised. Mm -hmm. Um, So I kind of just get behind the mic and go for what I'm thinking of. And if I like what comes out, I keep it. If I don't like what comes out, I don't keep it. But, and so even if I like what happens, I'll then go back and redo it to clean it up and make sure I got it right. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of my, most of these songs have been written. So, uh, what's the first song that you wrote for the project? Um, first song I wrote was the first song I released, uh, California, Closet of Capes. Um... That's still probably one of my favorites that I've put out uh, because I don't know. I was just I kind of started the project with this idea that I wanted to make some kind of just strange, funky, electronic music, um, all of which had some kind of retro vibe. And I eventually kind of branched out and was like, well, I could really just kind of I'm just going to use this opportunity with the solo project to make whatever I want. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's all based in something electronic um but i started with that just because you know it just kind of and like that one for example that just um i had that riff and and bass line just kind of sitting around Mm -hmm. and i was just like you know i just want to make something fun i thought it was just going to be a little thing and i was like wait i really like this and i was like well yeah i'll put it out see where it goes and then i just kept going until i think i'm at like nine songs that i've put out since this whole thing no Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was the first one, and still probably one of my favorites. Cool, cool, that's good. So, how and why did you choose the name Fawns? Like, is it an acronym because it's all in caps? Is no. it? <laughs> you know, I, this is this is actually a really funny story. So, mm-hmm. I I feel like there's a lot of bands in like the indie electronic alternative realm that have a name like that Mm -hmm. you know like just like an all caps name that's usually um the name of like a baby animal but spelled slightly wrong or something like that (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah. usually at ease in weird places and i was like that sounds like something 
that like a band who would play like the big festival circuit but that nobody like really knows would 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 yeah. have and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. What go for so it actually kind of started in my head as not really not really a joke but as kind of like uh oh this is just sort of like this name is specifically meant to be derivative derivative of that and i want to kind of make music like that but with my own sort of spin on it. And so that's where it came from. And I was like, but now I actually really like it. Okay. Like, I really yeah. genuinely love the name. And I'm like, it feels right for what I'm doing because it it just encompasses the fact that it was like a creative idea that I had one time and all the music that I'm making. I'm trying to make spontaneous staying at home, not being able to do anything else music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I feel like that's Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so speaking of being at home, uh, what bands have you been listening to? Oh, man. I've, uh, Nick probably said the same thing if you asked him this, but I've been listening to a ton of Venture Shikari. Yeah, um, did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where, where the two of us are totally obsessed with that band. I would say they're probably the biggest songwriting influence for our band, Drive Kit. And one of my biggest songwriting influences for this project too because there's so much electronics going on with that whole thing um mm -hmm. i in general i've been listening to well really i've mostly been listening to uh you know electronic pop and some pop rock oh. but mostly like electronic pop a lot of more dance oriented stuff but i've also been listening to a lot of like um Deftones and more exper experimental heavy music, okay. and I've been yeah. getting back into like um, technical death metal and all that kind of stuff. You know, I've just been I've been tackling a bunch of stuff lately, but uh, yeah. So I've really just been mostly listening to that, like stuff like you know, like I said, Deftones, The Faceless. I've been listening to a, a lot of Radiohead recently, just in general. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really it. All right. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because you mentioned that this is actually a quarantine-born project, I right. guess you could say that. Yeah. Um, are you working on, like, any new songs right now to put out? Um, yeah, I actually am working on a few things right now. I wrote something yesterday that um, was very much born out of uh, a conversation that I was having. Because I, I was on Zoom with a bunch of my friends, and I haven't seen them really since school abruptly ended mm. uh, mm -hmm. and it just felt really nice to be with them again and the music that I was writing um, like I wrote this guitar thing that was actually kind of born out of that feeling and it sounds kind of very hopeful and forward thinking but while also being very energetic and fun mm -hmm. uh, because we were we were having a a grand old time we stayed up until like three in the morning um, <laughs> oh, that's always the best yeah, yeah. Uh, no yeah it was, great. it was very it was very like middle of the summer bonfire energy mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. for, yeah over zoom yeah. <laughs> uh yeah. but yeah so like the music i'm working on right now is actually born out of that but it's difficult because i feel like it's something that i would rather use for drive kit and that's something that's actually been really difficult during this time is when I'm right, when I write something, I'm like, should I keep this mm -hmm. for the other thing? Mm -hmm. or should I put it out right now as this thing? Um, and we've even talked about maybe potentially in the future covering some of these songs live when we play drive kit shows. So we'll Ooh, see. Cool. Yeah, cool. sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah it sounds cool. Yeah. yeah, and I do plan on actually um, once everything's kind of back to normal, hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, I do plan on bringing this project to the stage with other people oh so. shit nice cool exciting exciting yeah oh, wow um, thank you well, exactly. <laughs> i don't do it yet but uh you'll have to try yeah um yeah. so aside from working on new music how else have you been staying busy in quarantine um well, I, I, I bought a switch to play animal crossing um okay. <laughs> and it's well, essential yeah yeah. Oh my god. But I've I've been having a hell of a time with Animal Crossing. Um, but I've also been playing a ton of uh, other stuff. I've been playing a lot of 
PlayStation. I mean, yeah, I've been mostly gaming, mm-hmm. um, but I've also been binge watching some uh, one or two one or two TV shows. I don't really like a lot of shows, but I'm a massive Star Wars fan, so I've been watching all the Star Wars animated shows. Okay. Mm-hmm. Kind of been going through them, and um, since there's time now, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just <laughs> finished the last of my college work like two days ago, so nice. I'm gonna grab it. Oh, wow. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot Thank of work. You. Jesus. It was really weird because I I was just I actually noted this the other day. I submitted my last assignment sitting at my dinner table. I was about to like eat. And I was like, I didn't think this is where I was gonna be when I when I like finished school. I thought yeah. I was gonna be walking. Behind. But yeah. it, but it was actually it's it's been nice to actually be able to finish everything with school in a more, I guess, relaxed environment and not actually um, having to, like, kind of, you know, like, panic and run around to get everything together and have, like, some crazy final day where I run to three different parts of campus or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just, I wrapped everything up here and it was, it was actually nice to, to kind of finish everything up here because I've been staying relatively and I use this, and I use the term relatively very loosely. I've been staying relatively mentally healthy this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you get that? Yeah. But you know, I don't think anybody's doing great. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, I've been, I, I have my health, and that's all I can really ask for. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <sighs> cool. Cool. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so what artists, other than the ones that you mentioned before, would you say are your biggest inspirations when you create music for Bonds? Um, ooh, there's a lot of Muse in there. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, Muse cool. is my favorite. Like, oh, ever. Oh. Top, number one. Nice. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a ton of Muse in there. There's also a ton of... Uh, not a lot, No, I wouldn't say a ton of, but I've been trying more... I, I didn't think I was going to do this at first, but obviously, you know, I'm a fan of rock music and, and you know, heavier music. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to throw a lot of uh, heavier influences in there. Like on the song, um, oh my God, I can't remember the names of my own songs. <laughs> um, the one with the yeah. down downtune drift. Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. I don't remember the names of my own song. Right. It's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, what was it? Yeah, the one with the groovy down tune drift. Um, <laughs> I was like trying to go for like a heavier thing, and I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to make something really like electronic, but also like super media, like um, almost like a, oh god, a, like an issues type thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I love like the first two issues records. I wasn't that crazy about the newer one, um, but I love their first two albums, especially the first one. The first one is one of my favorite albums of all time. Um, mm-hmm. And I just love like down tuned stuff. I mean, I have you know a few extended range guitars. I have a seven string and a five string, so I mm-hmm. like to play with that lower slinky like groovy sounding stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like my favorite thing in music is when something has like a groove that you could just like beat people up to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I get that. I get yeah. that. Yeah. So, like, so I'm trying to you know keep that feeling going because like I I, I want to let myself make aggressive music when I feel like making aggressive music and I want to let myself make lighter music when I feel like making lighter music. Like, I have that one song, uh, Escapism, that's literally just, like, me Mm -hmm. for five minutes or something crazy like that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But, yeah. And, you know, with all of this, I I wanted to make something eclectic. I actually have a whole entire, like, 13-song volume of material that I made, like, a year and a half ago Mm -hmm. that is for my solo project even though it was under a different name at the time yeah that i want to use but i want to actually like record it properly and use those songs as like demos when yeah um 
you know, I want to record it properly when I can. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I have a, a, an entire other album that I'm sitting on. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. Wow. Right. Okay. Cool. cool. Uh, Exciting. Very strange. That one has a lot of, uh, sh like, weird rhythms and, and just kind of wild stuff going on. Um I forget what I I forget what I even called it, but it was like very. Oh, I, uh, the name of the album is uh, Biotechnology. Okay, Ooh, uh, that's cool. That's not going to come out anytime soon. Yeah, but mm -hmm. uh, that is something that I'm going to put out. And actually, I'm planning on taking the songs that I've put out so far with maybe one extra. Um, I'm going to try to do this at some point. Hopefully, by the end of the month, I'm going to remaster them, fix some things on the songs and hopefully put that out as like one collection on like spotify so i can actually kind of promote it better yeah okay. yeah but the reason why i use soundcloud is just because it's free and it's easy to put anything up whenever i want mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's not as widely used or liked by as many people it's not as easy to get it out there as it would be with you know like a popular streaming service so yeah, i, I want mm -hmm. to uh, actually get it, this stuff on there so that more people can appreciate it yeah okay. yeah yeah um, so what was the first concert that you attended? I'm sorry? What was the first was that? concert that you attended? Oh, I remember it like, uh, not like it was yesterday. Oh my god, it feels like it was so long ago. <laughs> uh, the first show I ever went to was at Starland Ballroom. It was 2015, and it was, it was April, and it was the five-year anniversary tour of the Devil Wears Prada Zombie EP. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. I'm Born of Osiris, Word Alive, and Secrets. Oh. I remember it. Oh, my God. That was, like, the first, like, touring package rock show that I went to. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, like... Because I, I personally feel like I got into, like, music, particularly going to see live music pretty late. Mm -hmm. into okay. my life. I didn't really do that often for the first... Oh, that was five years ago so i didn't really do that for the first like 16 years of my life yeah mm -hmm. um and but it was great because since that show mm -hmm. i can't remember like a time in my life when i wasn't going to shows whether they're big touring packages or local shows yeah yeah since then i've done everything from either playing or being at a show at a place like the meat locker with like 10 people mm -hmm. uh, going to see you know um shows that like Madison square garden and stuff you know but i just yeah i i love live music and i can't wait for it to come back i i oh, yeah. I, I, I could really really use like a uh uh like a hardcore show right now oh my god mm -hmm. yeah i feel that you can have only been to two, but and Glory would die I in any that. sort of hardcore pit. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I would get yeah. trampled yeah. instantly. <laughs> you know what? I could use that. I could use it every time I die. Show right now. Uh -huh. That's what I. Oh. Mm -hmm. I have had. They're like probably top ten bands ever for me, and mm -hmm. I, my, I think I've seen them five or six times. I've seen them more than I've seen anybody else. Yeah. But yeah. Oh. You know, their shows are like a religious experience. <laughs> Check them out, definitely. Them, definitely. So, if you could go to any concert at all, past or present, would it be that band that you just mentioned, or another band? Ooh, that's a tough one. You know, I mean, they they have shows that it's like, oh man, that would have been great to go to. Because you know how like. I'm sure y'all do this, but like, you know, when you go onto YouTube and you just kind of go down the YouTube rabbit hole of like live shows. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of like really good pro shot stuff on there, especially like hardcore shows like that channel Hate Five Six. Like they do great uh, hardcore show uh, videos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think if I could be at any. Oh, man. I know. I know. Sure. Um, I would be at. I don't care what date. I would be at a date of Warped Tour 2008. Ooh, okay. Warped Tour 2008 was extraordinary. <laughs> Everybody was on that, and it was 2008, so a lot of these bands sounded different, but 
oh my god, uh, August Burns Red, Bring the Horizon, Devil Wars Prada, Every Time I Die, Paramore, um, uh, Katy Perry. <laughs> um, <laughs> For some reason, she was there. Um, yeah, that was that year. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, that's not even like the beginning of it. Like it, it's literally an, an it's incredible list. Yeah, it's like the, the peak there. Um, oh my god, uh, MCR probably. MCR was the only big one that what like, wasn't there. Actually. Really? Weren't they, weren't they still yeah, doing MCR... the Black Parade tour at that point? Two thousand eight. Two thousand eight. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least on, yeah, at the probably. end of it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Towards. Yeah, probably towards the end. Of it. Um, I think Under Earth probably was there. Oh my god, like, you know, We the Kings, all the classic Warcraft bands were there, but like, yeah, it was insane. It was an insane lineup. Oh my god, somebody else crazy was there. Gym Class Heroes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but just like a, a, a wild lineup, you know, and I mean, I want to see Paramore so badly. I love Paramore yeah, so much. Yeah, same here, yeah. 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 Um, and I just like really need to. Yeah everything's mm-hmm. back or even I, I i would i would love to go to one of Haley's solo shows that was supposed to happen hopefully he's going to be getting rescheduled yeah she said it's mm-hmm. supposed to be rescheduled they just don't have new dates of course yeah i've yeah. been liking a lot of the uh solo stuff she's been putting out i like it glory doesn't <laughs> <laughs> biggest fan but it's i'm, I'm happy you like it I'm, yeah, well, no, you like I, it. I'm just i mean Haley williams is my favorite singer in the entire oh movie. yeah 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 uh like literally number one vocalist and, and one of my favorite people i mean i, I think she's just amazing um mm. but yeah I, I mean and i haven't been liking it as much as i've been liking uh you know paramore stuff obviously but I, i've been yeah. liking some of it mm-hmm. some of it i actually haven't been like too big on but i've been liking most of it and but but most of all i think what's really important is that i really i like what she's doing and i almost feel <laughs> Obviously, I'm not on the level of Haley Williams, but yeah. I feel almost like a kindred spirit in the fact that I'm doing this solo thing by myself, and she's doing the solo thing by herself. I mean, with other people, too. Mm-hmm. But it's like, mm-hmm. you know, just the fact that as a musician, I'm in a community of other people who are musicians, and no matter how famous or not famous they are or how successful they are or not successful or what kind mm-hmm. of people make if somebody is putting their own work and their own hands on and getting yeah, to share out. that with other people all oh, share and that it's just beautiful you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right so you cut out a bit there towards the yeah end. you cut out like and uh, yeah okay. the entire thing like yeah. All right. Well, I was basically just saying that Haley's making solo music. I'm making solo music, and the fact that we're doing that at the same time and both mm-hmm. musicians, even though we're on the totally different sides of the spectrum in terms of fame and in terms of genres, somewhat. Even though I feel like we're kind of making similar music, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, it, it connects all musicians in a way that is really, really special. Yeah. Yeah. Because no matter what, if you're making music, you're making music. You're ma- that's your art. You're you're putting that aspect of yourself into something and then out into the world. Yeah. And it's just it, it's a it's a connective tissue that brings everyone together, even though everything's so tricky. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I um, understand. So we get we do this thing. We get a question from the last band we interviewed. This one comes from uh, Wave Break. If you could tour with any three bands, who would they be? Wait, I'm sorry, you're cutting out a little bit. Am I cutting out? Um, okay, so we do this thing. We get a question from the last band we interviewed. This comes from Wave Break. Uh, if you could tour with any three bands, who would they be? Did I cut out? Not for me. No. some of that because you lagged a little okay um do you want me to try i think i think he's dying oh no are we good 
Is everything okay? <laughs> He's so weird. <laughs> this is part. No. We can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, the audio is dead. Slow down and lag. No, it's totally fine. Um. So now you can. So hear the us? question is, if or with three fans, who would they be? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm, any three bands. Like, not just, like, local bands that I'm friends with, like, anyone? Yeah. Anyone. Oh, wow. Uh, um, that's a tough one. Okay. One is the contortionist. Okay. Um, vain. <laughs> and... Deftones. Okay. No. Hold on. Okay. Wait. Okay. You cut out. Yeah. <laughs> can you can you listen oh, again? I love Poppy. <laughs> oh, Poppy. Poppy. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. I I. Poppy's new album is wild. <laughs> yeah. 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 Definitely. Um. But yeah, no, I think that's actually who I would pick. Just like uh, artists who blend electronic stuff with heavy stuff, with rock stuff, with pop stuff, which is what I'm trying to do. So, okay. yeah. Wait, you cut out. L. <laughs> okay. Um, so, where do you see the project in the next five years? <laughs> where do you see the project in the next five years okay oh my gosh um i don't know i think i what i'm gonna do for now is i'm just gonna keep putting out songs um just kind of when i feel like putting the song out just kind of making music when i want when i feel inspired and just letting it keep go and then once things get back to normal i want to bring it to the stage like i was saying before oh. mm -hmm. um because i feel like it could be a really really fun live experience and could also bring something uh obviously what i'm doing is nothing uh too unique i mean there's unique sounds in there but Definitely. uh you know i i feel like there's not a lot of bands at least that i know doing you know the heavily electronic thing with a lot of um synths and also live instruments and uh i mean there are definitely some but not too many that i'm personally acquainted with so i would like to bring that into the scene that i'm acquainted with if that makes sense yeah okay um so we're gonna shift away from music for the last couple questions uh if you were on death row, what would your last meal be and why? L. <laughs> I feel like we're lagged behind. Yeah. I think. Can you hear us? I'm gonna take that as a no. Oh, okay. He cut out. I think we're I think we're lagging again. All right. Wait. I think I can hear you now. Okay. Someone okay. asked a question? Yeah, I'll ask it again. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh so we're gonna move away from music now. Uh if you're on death row, what would your last meal be and why? Oh man. And drink. <laughs> that's a that's a fun question. It's my favorite. <laughs> it's my favorite. You're cutting out. <laughs> Did he cut out? He's cutting yeah, out. He's cutting out. I want to hear what he's gonna have. 
it's gonna be an L. I can't read lips either. Wait. Hello? 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 Uh, cut out again. Hello? You're cutting out. Uh oh. Nah. Alright. I think we're I think we're a little lag behind. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Now I can. But you cut okay, out your enough. entire answer cut out. Yeah, your your answer cut out and I want to know. That's fine, okay. I would have a plate of fettuccine Alfredo with chicken. Oh, in it. Taste. Uh -huh. Yes. And a glass of red wine. That's what I would want. <laughs> okay. All right. Simple. Well not simple, but like good. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I want right now. So that's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. That's probably what just something like something like really indulgent like that because mm -hmm. like who cares about calories i'm gonna die <laughs> exactly exactly facts facts exactly. <laughs> that's what you gotta do and stuff like that yeah. so if you could live in one fictional world for a week where would you live star wars next mm -hmm. question <laughs> like a hundred percent okay <laughs> like a hundred percent like mm -hmm time of my entire one of the best times of my entire life was this past january when i went to um walt disney world in florida and i went to galaxy's edge mm -hmm. the star wars themed area there oh my like a like next level i'm like a huge theme park nerd mm -hmm. that was next level i was like i i'm well i mean you know i'm a huge star wars nerd huge theme park nerd put the two things together i'm like I, combine in them. heaven yeah <laughs> Yeah, that was that was one of the best times of my life. That's absolutely where I would want to, because there's so much cool stuff. I mean, there's a lot of danger, obviously, but there's a lot of yeah. cool stuff there too. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, definitely. All right. uh, answer. So, yeah. So for the last question, um, probably the most important question, uh, what's your favorite? All right. Last question. Uh, probably the most important question. What's your favorite color? Damn. Oh. Mm -hmm. I think it's indigo. Okay. Indigo. Indigo. That's like a dark blue, right? Yeah, it's like a bluish purple. Yeah. Sorry, I need to look up what indigo looks like. Yeah. I know it's like in the gonna rainbow the song that I learned on Cat in the Hat. Oh, that's a very nice color. Yeah, because like mm -hmm. it's either that or green. Like I love purple and green, but like that color right there is just like perfect. I don't know there's just yeah. about it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> choice. That's a great choice. question. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, My second favorite. <laughs> Gloria doesn't like any of the music related questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. So that's all the questions we have. Is there anything you want to plug? All right, cool. Um, well, you know, thank you very much for having me on. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I hope you. I hope that this can. Uh, I know there's a lot of lag, so I hope this comes together okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it will. Um, oh man. Uh, yeah, no, it's just the the project. I know I sent you. I know I sent y'all the link for it. It'll be down. Um, down there. Yeah. In the description. Yeah, just fawn and. Uh, the new Drive Kids song that I'm sure Nick talked about the other day. Mm -hmm. um, oh, uh, with my my school, I've been doing weekly to bi-weekly videos um, covering songs from classic albums for this thing we do called Tuesday Night Record Club, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where uh, basically the dean of my school runs with um, reviews a classic album and I was in this class this last semester task was to cover a song for that mm -hmm. and we were originally mm -hmm. going to be doing those live but mm -hmm. now that since all this is happening we've actually been recording the covers over the internet and piecing them together and making videos for them mm -hmm. so um, I will send the link so that y'all can put the link in the thing yeah. so that people can check it out yeah um, 
on a YouTube channel, and there's a bunch of them up, and we're going to only be putting out over there. So. Okay. That's mm-hmm. another really cool project. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. Thank you very cool. much for having me on. Yeah. It was great. So uh, thanks, for thanks for coming. Uh, this was Fonz, and uh, we're the Good Noise Podcast.